Let's kick it off straight away with defining leadership and being the alpha male with tattoos, James Murray. Oh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got tattoos too. I, you gotta say. I can just see the lion. So yeah, you, well. Lion the leader. Yes. How would you define leadership? Well, like I've always had the classic saying, I made it up, I'm pretty sure I did anyway. <laughs> uh, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Actually, John Maxwell. Yeah. All credit, all credit <laughs> John Maxwell. I'm sorry. I know. Oh, it would have. Right. But he did steal it from me. No, um, I think it's influence and obviously leadership. Uh, is recognising that I have influence and what I do with that and who I'm influencing with it uh, is a big is a big thing. Paul the Apostle to go scriptural because I know you're waiting for me as a theologian <laughs> to jump in there. But um, he says, you know, follow me as I follow the example of Christ. So leadership is the ability to say, hey, you can, you can follow me. And obviously, living a life that says you can you can live by my example, yeah. uh, which is also it's heavy and confronting, right? But yeah. that is the. Uh, that's the responsibility of it. So do you feel the weight now you've moved from obviously youth leadership many days ago to pastoring a church, C3 Cronulla, that you have to lift the way that you influence people because, you know, you can no longer, you know, do the eggings of houses and make it fun? Or well, you can not, still do that? Yeah, yeah, well, it's more, you know, under the radar. <laughs> and, <obviously, laughs> and plus, I now I delegate people to eggs. So, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but let's talk about this. That's great leadership. In, now you're probably leading a whole lot more leaders as you get them to lead different departments and lead different aspects of church life. Is there a distinction? between leading, I guess, general followers and leading now leaders themselves? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think um, part of leading leaders has to be, first and foremost, your own security. Um, you will be an ineffective leader if you're not secure in yourself. Yeah. And so that has to be the number one thing that when you start leading leaders, uh, your security is number, is number one. Are you secure enough? Are you leading from a place of security? And a person who is a secure leader actually becomes a more attractive leader anyway, Absolutely. because they know they're gonna flourish in that environment of leadership because that person's secure. There's not a, you know, kind of a, the spirit of Saul, like throwing javelins across the room or <laughs> eggs for that matter. <laughs> um, but I think that's a big part that we've, you know, I've had to journey through more and more, making sure I'm more secure, especially as a young leader, mm. you know what I mean? That you have, to, you have to lead people that are, that are older than you and have had a lot more life experience. Um, but I'm so grateful that, that God's leadership also is not about ability, but it's also about choice. Yeah. Tam, what would you say? Because thinking about the fact that he said, um, you do have to be confident in yourself when you're leading people who are older than you. You and your husband have just stepped in as the campus pastors at Oxford Falls location uh, here in Sydney. That's a big job to move from young adults to now leading adults, people more experienced than you, who have kids probably your age. What's that transition been like for you? Good. I think the body of Christ is an amazing thing because it um, it's able to move and flow and, and appreciate what God is doing. And I think we're blessed to be in a church like ours in that we are always looking to the future and relying on leadership to take us there. And that's mm. always not, not looked yeah. like the same cookie cutter that it has done in the past. Mm. And so I appreciate that leadership. It's definitely daunting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but that's where the Holy Spirit comes. Yeah. He comes to fill those gaps mm. and if we continue to rely on Him, He does enable us to sit in that appointment with an assurance mm. and a confidence. We certainly might not always know what to do immediately, but He certainly leads us to great fruitfulness. And um, yeah, it's a great thing. Well, speaking about uh, leadership and obviously having to step into the confidence of that role, I know that'd be hard for you, Alex Farncom, to, uh, <laughs> to have that confidence to uh, step into leadership. I think one of the great characteristics of every leader is that they would look at how someone's doing something, the predecessor, and think, I mean, I could do better than that. Mm. And, and that's probably what a lot of us think that allows us to ride, rise into leadership, to think that we can make a difference. Now that you've stepped into leadership, more leadership roles, has it been something where you expected it was going to be like this, but kind of what you're experiencing is, is something around here and how have you managed that? Um, I definitely am someone that thinks I can do it better than the person before me. Um, Honest. And, <laughs> and, but the, the, the thing that I missed, and this ties into what you guys are saying and particularly on identity, is that I probably thought being younger and stepping into the role I could do it better. But what I think I have missed and why, why maybe certain ministries or certain activities didn't get the attention is that I probably wasn't, I couldn't live better than that. And what, and what I mean by that is that identity and character are far more important than ability, influence and results. Mm. Yeah. And so I'm only seeing from the being protected by inexperience, I'm only seeing results, I'm only seeing influence, I'm only seeing how it's operating. And so I'm thinking, I can do it better. But l I am learning more and more and more that leadership is security, identity and character. Yeah. And so 
I am just trying to get out of the way at the moment. I don't want to be seen so that my character can can match the leaders that are above me. Yeah. So that's probably, and that's uh, uh, credit to Pastor Phil. The, th- the thing that I've noticed more is not what he's done, but just who he is and the integrity that he has. And that's someone I'm looking to, to go, okay, I just want to have the character that matches you, not, yeah. not the results. How are you yeah. going with that? In- incredible, actually, James. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, yeah. 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 So the confidence is still there. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of uh, making it look easy, Ryan, you do make leadership look easy and you're, oh. you're leading one congregation and now many congregations. Has your leadership style had to change now you're leading uh, and the character, I guess, have to lift now that you're leading multiple locations versus just one location? What's the yeah, nuance? Yeah, absolutely, between? from like planting to now having multiple locations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, you're a lot in, you're involved in everything from setup to pastoral care to teaching, preaching, you know, the whole bit. Uh, nowadays, the, the, the game has changed, so to speak. You know, it's a lot more. I spend most of my time now with staff and pastors and doing development one-on-one. That would be 90% of my day every day, uh, opposed to, you know, where I was doing a lot, a lot of other things before mm-hmm. and having in different locations and then being a couple of hours apart um, also is different. So uh, a lot of the development's done over FaceTime or yeah. other things like that. And you, you kind of got to be in for the big moments, mm-hmm. you know. Now, Mel, you're a leader and typically, although we have two females at this table, it is quite a, a boys club dominated by ma- males, even in church life. And you're not just a leader, you're a senior pastor yep. of a church. You've obviously smashed that glass ceiling. Uh, do you think it's an advantage being a woman or is it being challenging having to lead men who might think they could do the job better? Well, absolutely, there are challenges, definitely. Mm-hmm. but. For me, I have spent, well, the last 25 years or however long I've been doing this, um, trying to be a woman and a leader, but it's not about the fact that I'm a woman. I'm trying to bring the gender out, take the gender out. I'm a leader and uh, that doesn't make me a better leader or a worse leader. Uh, It's not gender specific in my opinion. So how would you define a leader though for you? For me? Hmm. Uh, a leader is someone who takes people where they don't want to go and then they thank you once they get there. Mm. <laughs> where they need to go but yeah. don't want to go. But yeah. they thank that's you right. once that's they awesome. get there. That's, very good. Yeah. that's really good. It's tough sometimes. What, yeah. what about, because you were talking about before, Ryan, about your whole development process. Because yeah. that's a big, I think that's a big one as well, making sure that yeah. a lot of people want to develop teams and people to sometimes get a, an effective service or a weekend, mm. but it's actually about you know, again, one of my other quotes, no, I'm joking, Paul Scanlon <laughs> said, you know, you, you know, you just want to build uh, big churches, but build big people. Yeah. What has your development process been like for that? Yeah, it's, it's actually changed over time because, oh, again, early days, I was talking a lot more about the, the, the works of leadership. You know, if I'm talking mm. to someone, the things that they're doing and can you do it better? And mm. uh, what I'm finding now is I'm spending a lot more time talking to them about their spirituality, their relationship with God, their relationship with others, significant others, mainly, you know, with their wife or, or the spouse. Uh, I'm talking to them about when did the last time they have fun? Mm-hmm. When was the last time well. they just recreated and enjoyed life or, or laughed? I know or, you're thinking, what you kind know? of fun are you having? <laughs> I, 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 I get into I, that. I said procreated this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but you I, I asked that as well. <laughs> so you actually ask the real questions, you get to the real meat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you that. must because, uh, again, if a person's healthy, then they're going to lead well, they're going to re- release others and they're going to be insecure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I try to get a read on that and then move into the practice of whatever they're doing. So that first then... Let's talk about what you're working on. Let's talk about your team. Who are you developing and how are you doing that? That's generally, I just kind of got a process now where I tick off those things and and it's virtually the same conversation with every leader. Touching on the healthy leadership, how do you, you've probably had some challenges where, as I said at the start, if the quote is true, which it is, everything rises and falls on leadership, how do you, def, how do you define and how do you discover a healthy leader? Because you might see people rising through the ranks and you think, oh, they're not healthy, I shouldn't give them position right now because yeah. they're going to multiply that lack of health. Have you found that? And what are the things to look for in a healthy leader? Anyone? Yeah, it's an interesting question too, because I don't know, I, I think 
the, the leadership journey is like your physical journey and that your body's not always 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah. There's always seasons where you're going to be, I got the flu, I'm yeah. sick. Unintentional, sometimes intentional, like things that you do yourself and or you sometimes get sick, you didn't mean to and all this thing that you did that you injured yourself. I think the same and leadership's the same and we have to have that grace to be able to journey with people through those moments, yeah. you know, where it's actually, yeah, they, they just blew it. So let's be the first to put the ball back in their hands yeah. as opposed so do you to... think everyone could be a leader? Yeah, oh, anyone exactly. can lead someone. Yeah. I mean, we all we can't just focus on that end result because the leadership is not just about what you're saying the fruit at the end of the day. It's about it's about initially leading them. If they're healthy, if they're strong, they're going to produce great fruit, and we can't rush that or hurry that. Mm. Although the leadership and administrative parts of me would like to just go from one to the other, it's about walking with people through their weakness, through their bad days, through their falls potentially. Maybe not giving them the same level of leadership if they've had some significant, you know, Massive challenge, Massive you know. Yeah. What about you, Mel? I guess you've, you've seen a lot more of those, um, you know, it, what, how many years have you been doing it now? Do you say, do you say 25 years? Yeah. Shoot, yeah. amazing. You must sleep in, gra- you sleep in glad wrap or something because you, you're looking fresh. Anyway, so, <laughs> that was a good. One. Okay, no, but what have you, what have you, what have you done there? Because you would have seen a lot of, you know, people go on that leadership journey. Yep. What's been your development process? Uh, okay, so I, I believe that everyone can be a leader. I, th- I believe that some people are more gifted, but we, right. it can be learned. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so for us, we do mentoring groups. So Paul and I mentor young leaders. Wow. Um, so what does that look like? Interest- I'm just, just interested to know. Uh, it goes for about 10 weeks. Oh, well, yeah, 10 sessions, pretty much. We do it together. Uh, he does, then he takes the guys away, I, I do the girls. Um, Is this yeah. development of new leaders or? Yeah, it's people that have leadership. Yeah, potential. potential. Yeah. Is yeah, that right. what you were asking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, we do a, a bit of uh, Sovereign Foundation stuff. You know, God started in you when you were little. We talk about um, integrity, character, who you are when no one's looking, um, leadership tests, yeah. you know, the word test, the integrity test. The uh, obedience test. Oh, mm. The uh, beep test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to do that in our in our church planners course. Did you? Wow. You did the a beep test. test. Well, yeah. 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 yeah, proper. Test. To qualify. <laughs> well, it seems to be a real shift on that with. Uh, leaders to be healthy in what you do spiritually and yeah. also organisationally, yeah. that physical health is quite important. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I see you post those videos at the gym. I mean, how important is that for you? I'm, I find it important because it's there's very few times um, in ministry, I think, that you, you, well, you need to find those times, I should say, where you can actually have just moments where you do what relaxes you, yeah. what, what, what takes the edge off ministry. So, so for me, going to the gym is like a time where you don't have to think. You just get in there, you enjoy it. It's like a, it's like a de, like a, a, a detox session or whatever, like an exhaling moment. So I, I really enjoy it for that reason. You proper enjoy it. I really do. I thoroughly enjoy going to the gym. I hate it. Really? Endorphin. What about the endorphins? Yeah, but you shouldn't. Yeah, but you've got to stop going to curves, Afterwards. man. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Well, it's been a problem trying to get in. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shoot, man, I feel for you. <laughs> But you've got to have it, hey. You've got to have those moments where you, you as a leader, I think if, we, if it is you, the leader, then I think I actually think a lot of people don't give enough attention to the rest moments. You know, there's not enough, uh, you know, as much as we're not a legalistic driven movement of churches, um, there has to be the, you know, the personal intention towards Sabbath and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, giving hard. that day of rest. It's difficult to stop. It is, yeah. it is. Well, especially in vision driven, you know, communities, which we are, we always, we want multiple churches around the world. And so it's go, 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 but you've got to stop and actually enjoy. When do, you, when do you turn off your phone? When do I turn it off? Time. Shoot, at night? Yeah. Oh, I put on Do Not Disturb. I do actually. I get yeah. to a certain time of night where I turn it on Do Not Disturb. Um, usually when I'm watching the, the Crown, which is a great series, you got to watch it. <laughs> um, you know, just just so I can you know turn it off. And on my day off, I have it on Do Not Disturb. Yeah. What's your day off? Well. Friday. Nice. Yeah. Not the traditional Monday. No. Here's the reason why. And listen, in viewers. Um, no, no. Here's the re- I actually found as a church planner coming in to Mondays and you know. Because I man, you have these dreams of where you think you're going to be by a certain time, right. and you know, which is like pretty confronting when you're not. And I found Monday like I was having my day off with Alana, and I was there, but I wasn't there because I was thinking about that thing we could have done and that thing we could have done. I'm like, that's not fair on her, and right. plus I'm not resting. I'm not. I'm thinking about all the stuff. So I thought, mate, Friday I can get everything done throughout the week. Message prep happens before then, so on Friday 
I'm sitting, re relaxing, enjoying, and then I've, re yeah. I've even got, I've got yeah. Saturday as well. Yeah. So it's you almost mean, you, a two you day. You had your message prepared before Friday. Oh yeah, yeah. Hello. mate, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Anyone else? I'm done with Thursday. Who else? Anyone wait till the last minute? Saturday? Yeah, I'm a last minute guy. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Alex, stop Kramer. it. Yeah. Kramer. When, when's your day pressure. off, Mel? Friday, same Friday reason. Well. Yep. Mondays, you're wrecked. You might as well be working rather than. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? No, I'm still Monday. I go, I go with the Monday. We should make a shift, Ryan. Yeah, you're right. I think Friday's so. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like led pretty, into the Friday. pretty chilled, though. So, yeah. message prep. I don't know. So when it comes to, I think one of the biggest challenges I hear from a lot of leaders is, and oh, I just I just can't get them to do it. I just can't get them to do anything. So for those who feel like it's dragging or hurting cats or dragging someone up a mountain to, as you said, Mel, somewhere where they need to go, but they necessarily don't want to go initially, but they will thank you at the end. What's the key to actually inspiring people when you're a leader, when you feel like this is so hard? Have you ever had moments where you feel like this is flipping hard? Never. Oh. <laughs> you know, I leave this room. Yeah, that's usually Monday. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you, you know what I reckon? I've noticed yeah. that, I don't know, when we were youth growing up, yeah. it felt like everyone wanted to be a leader or pastor. Totally. Like it was sexy. Yeah. It, it was, was. It was something that nowadays, zip, mm. nobody. Yeah. It's, I, well, it's I think a changing I, landscape. It's the, it's, the, it's the pendulum swing of yeah. culture. And, and different in different times that we're in because I, I I agree with you exactly the same. I came from the generation where it was like, man, let's take over the world, let's do it. Yeah. And, and, and and typically in in Christendom, we're given to extremes yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. So the extreme was, man, it's ministry, ministry, ministry. Everyone's I think a pastor, everyone's a pastor, and we neglected the fact that ministry isn't just a Sunday pa yeah. person on a pulpit kind of thing. And and there was a lot of people who had different skill sets and giftings, and then they. Beginning to fan them into flame now. Yeah, yeah. and they, they, they got neglected, or we didn't talk about it as much. It wasn't as holistic in that sense. Yeah. And now we've got a lot of people like, no, man, I'm going to be a minister in the marketplace or this, which is awesome. Yeah. But again, it's the pendulum swing. It's back out here again. So ministry, the excitement to plant churches or, or become a leader, I just don't feel as prominent yeah. as it used to be. And we've just got to come back to that. You've literally got to call it out of people now. And like you were saying, they just make take it them somewhere no, where they, <laughs> they don't want to go because they're like, yeah. No, I'm not a leader. And you go, well, I see potential. Yeah, right. Right. But if you're talking about health, okay, here's one of the challenges. We talk about that we want to get the job done. We want to plant churches. We want to build the churches because heaven and hell are reality. So we want to see people come into the kingdom of God. And we're pushing people to pull off Sunday services, to pull off connect groups because they must. Mm. But what if someone gets tired and it's like, I, I just don't want to, I can't in this season. Because some people go through seasons, yeah, we're about to have absolutely. our fourth child and it's challenging yeah. sometimes. You just feel, I just need a rest. Yeah. How do you accommodate that? I think I'm um, giving people an ability to commit to a certain length of time. Like I know in yeah, our leadership here, we've just signed up people, you know, for a commitment of a term, mm, you know, like yeah. sign up for six months. Not that at the end of six months, you're just gonna let them off the hook. Yeah. It just gives them a chance to breathe and, and rethink it's God. So at, at, at the end of six months, what you happens? Know, well, you know, you would meet with them as a connect leader or whatnot and, and establish, okay, how did it go? What was great? Yeah. What was hard? What was challenging? You have that holiday season off. And you know, after that time, yeah. you'll be ready to go again. But if people can never see an end, you just feel like you're constantly trying to keep up with the expectation yeah, of what's in front of you. But if you feel like you have a chance to um, go away with God, I mean, He's the one who right. who draws out of us the right. need to lead totally. people. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and so we have to give people the opportunity to recommit and re-sign up. Mm. There's a growing trend with the whole serve one, sit one. Does anyone do that where instead of right. people being on every single week, you have to serve one Sunday, then you have to sit in a service and yeah. actually soak and get yeah, to right. enjoy it. Anyone implementing that? We do We do more, like, because we do the now, the nine, the 11 service, we are encouraging that culture more, but our overall culture is actually one out of three you're serving. Okay. One out of three you're one serving? One out of three. Wow. One out of three weekends, you're you're serving in church in some some fashion. Versus, because like, normally it's everyone. like two everyone, to serve. every single person in the church has to do that. You know, and what saying, was the rationale behind that for you? Because it's Christian. Yeah, it's that's why it was the rationale. It's like it's Christian to serve one another. The amount of one another scriptures in Bible, and we're very big about the loss, and we should be. Yeah. But then the one anotherness in scripture is huge. And so, hey, this is actually part of your Christian yeah. maturity. That you will come, yeah, and say, hey, this is my turn to give back. Yeah. It's my turn to give back. So one out of three, which I think is super easy and achievable. It is, and, and my question was more to the point that most people would say, okay, you serve two, then you can sit one. Yeah. But you seem to have gone the other end where you actually give people a little bit more time to enjoy and then... Well, if one in three, like you say, any team that's happening in the church, you imagine approaching a person saying, hey, I want to serve in kids ministry or youth or production. And you're saying, hey, one out of every three weeks, we want you on. We want you to commit to it. You need to be diligent to it. We don't want you to be, oh, sorry, I forgot. Like, you know, you're encouraging it to be a, a, a diligent person with what you're doing. 
but I figure it's that, that to me, you get to sit in those two and those two as well are predominantly all about, about bringing friends. Yep. Mm. Like yeah, this yeah. is a time to sit because if you're serving, it's hard to bring friends. So yeah. we want to have that. So it's kind of like a two out of three is all about other people and, and you and sitting in church. And then that one is about you coming and you serving other people. Mm. And I, I don't know, for us, it's, it's so far so good. Mm. You know, it's, it's encouraged people to go, yeah, I, mm. I, I could do that. And then even if, like you're saying before, Terence, the I think as leaders, we've got to have the discernment I think that's one of the greatest things we need to pray for all the time as leaders is discernment yep. of where people are at. Yeah. Because you know, Paul says to the, ch- the church in Thessalonica, he says, I think it's in First Thessalonians 5, he says, hey, I want you to encourage the weak and warn the idle. But then he says, be patient with them all. Mm-hmm. But it's actually having the discernment to go, okay, you, the last thing you want to be doing yeah. is, is, is warning the discouraged yeah. and encouraging the person who's lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, encourage, oh, it's all right. No, no, you've got to have the discernment to go, this brother needs a little bit of a, come on, bro, like you're yeah. gifted, yes. let's go. The big and then question some, that I've yeah, been working on is, is, and I've really been on this journey, is that no one cares about my ministry or what I'm in charge of more than me. No one will ever care as much, sure. but we expect them to often. Yeah, and true. so I have to remember that, uh, to t- not have it through the lens of what am I trying to achieve, but what is God trying to achieve in this life? Yeah. And sometimes yeah. a family just needs a break. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. someone's burning out. Sometimes someone's going through a mental health struggle and they just need to pause and know that you love them. And that's probably the biggest journey for me is not looking at activity and outcome, but looking at what God wants to do with that person. Yeah, Yeah. I think think you've got to say every person needs to be encouraged that their ultimate service Mm. is before God. Because I I say to our church often, you know, at the end of your life, you're not going to stand before me and give me an account for the life that you live, Mm. which scripture says clearly, uh, you're going to stand before him. So what is... He purposed you, called you to, Mm -hmm. and asking that question kind of liberates you as a leader because suddenly it takes all the manipulation out of it, (laughs) you know, where I'm not trying to Mm -hmm. pressure you into it. Um, Clear expectations though, something like that, one in three is a big deal. I think most people feel unsafe in an environment where they don't know what you want. What's the expectations for your guys? What do you have for your leaders? it's varied, but uh, we we kind of, through our planning software and that sort of thing that we use for all services and so on, uh, we ask people mm-hmm. to be intentional about blocking out dates and being clear about what they're willing to contribute. Mm. Yep. So we kind of meet in the middle and that seems to work quite well. Mm. Um, it's an interesting landscape though, because people only go to church regularly, sort of second and third week now. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's now regular yeah. and normal. And um, so that, that, that's going to be a great way to grow the church, I reckon, just yeah. that. <laughs> but it's even, in saying that too, I've, I've found this to be true that, um, you know, I th- okay, think I read the book once, but let's just say I made it up as well. Okay, so, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're the leader. You gotta buy it. You gotta buy it. Buy it now in the foyer. Okay, so, but, but um, you know, we've got to value engagement over attendance. You've got to value engagement over attendance mm-hmm. because if you're valuing attendance, get ready for fickle leadership in yourself, right. let alone everyone else, because it's just yes. about, because that's what, it's always fluctuating. Totally, it's fluctuation all the time. But if I can value engagement, yeah. people actually being engaged in church. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to get. And I think if people are more engaged, which every single one of us, the reason why our pastors or people who we've done ministry with never called us up and said, are you, uh, are you coming this week? No, because we were so engaged. Yeah. Mm. Of course they're going to be there. So how do you measure engagement? What are measures for engagement for you? I think it, to me, it's the, it's the involvement level. You know, and you can tell by some, if someone's engaged or not. I think mm. it's the passion in which they do it, the, the uh, faithfulness in, with they, in which they do it as well. Mm. So the passion and the faithfulness, if they're there all the time, and they're passionate about it. I'm like, man, you, you, you're, you're with us. You, 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 you're on the journey with me. Let's it's do it together. It's a great question, Alex, because I think many times we say we want this result, but do we measure it? And do we celebrate that? And I think if we don't measure it and we don't have a way to celebrate that as well, uh, it's never going to happen or it's never. And I think one of the ways we, we can measure the whole engagement is, is someone actually doing life with people? Are they in connect groups? Are they in a place where they can take the mask off yeah. and be real with people? Because that's where you really engage. And I think many times in church life, we just measure Sunday attendance, mm. which is one thing, but someone can sneak in and sneak yeah. back out. For us, we do, yeah, are they in a group? Yeah. Are they in church? Are they serving on a team? Are they giving? Like, so So we actually met, that's engagement is what we look at, yeah. Um, yeah. rather awesome. than attendance. Yeah, yeah. For that reason. Yeah. Mm. So they're, they're the sorts of things yeah, that we look at in our church. We want people in a group, serving at church. They're the first two things. That, okay. That is the yeah. new metric, yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah.